What up? This is Mr. Sampson. How are you today? This is going to be dependent probability events. Dependent. We're going to talk about independent and dependent probability. So let's get cracking here. This is uh, lesson six probability from this probability handout unit. And this is lesson six dependent events. Dependent. Okay. So they depend on each other. All right. Coach Cruz is responsible for randomly selecting a captain and co-captain, so captain and then a co-captain for the volleyball team, I'm sorry, for the volleyball game, to participate in the coin toss. There are 12 players to select from. 12 players. All right, so 12 players right there. All right, Coach Cruz says that each team member, each team member has one in 12 chance of being a captain and co-captain. Um, determine if you agree or disagree. I would say that I disagree I disagree and here's why if you select one player out of 12 right uh, if I write that down and get this set okay if you select one player out of 12 right well now that player is selected that player cannot be captain and co-captain so there's one less player so now the next probability is one out of 11 not one out of 12 so the the idea is once you take someone away, you don't put them back, you can't be captain and co-captain, so yeah, I disagree. This one, you just put disagree because uh, the chances are not the same once one player is selected, okay? All right, now let's look at independent probability again. Let's review this, and then we'll talk about dependent probability again. All right, when the outcomes of one event does not, does not, high, circle that please, does not impact the outcome of a second event, the events are called independent. So probability of A times the probability of B, no big deal. But when the outcomes of one do of one event do impact the events of the out, the outcome of the other, then it is called dependent probability. So the first event affects the second event. So the way you would write this is the probability of A, right? But now that A has been selected. There's one less, so it would be B. The, pro the the second one is the probability probability of B after A. Okay, I know it's a little confusing. You're going to see this in examples in just a second. All right. Number one, read each situation below and determine if an independent if it's independent or dependent. Here we go. A flipping two coins r results in one landing on heads and one landing on tails. All right. For A, if you flip two coins, is that independent or dependent? Does what you flip the first time affect what you flip the second time? No, it does not. So they are independent, okay? Two coins flipping are independent of each other, okay? All right, let's go to B. Anita reaches into a drawer with, a, with necklaces and selects two to wear, okay? Well, that does affect. Let's say she reaches out, she grabs the first necklace, takes it out. Reaches in, grabs the second necklace, takes it out. Well, does the first necklace she took out and didn't put back, does that affect the second necklace? Yes, it does. It does affect it. So that should be dependent. Yep, it is dependent. All right. Part C. You draw a joker from a deck of cards. And then you draw an ace. Okay. Now, jokers and aces aren't the same. But if you draw a joker out of a deck of cards... The joker, I think there's 52 cards in a deck, plus the two jokers makes 54 cards. You pull out a joker, now you have 53 cards. So now there's four aces in the deck, but there's only 53 cards, not 54 to start. Does that make sense? So, it is should be dependent, which it is. It's dependent. All right. D, you draw a queen from a deck of cards, and you replace it. That's the big deal right there. You replace it and then draw a, then draw a 10. Because you put the card back, the probability starts again, right? So the probability, real quick, the probability of getting a queen is 4 out of 52 on a normal deck of cards without jokers, okay? Um, but if you put it back, the probability of getting a 10 is also 4 out of 52, right? So they don't change. They're independent of each other, so it should be independent. Oh, hold on. There we go. Come on. Yes. Independent. All right. And last one. Three-digit password can be com a combination of numbers. A three-digit password can be any combination of numbers. 
Okay, so if you have any combination of numbers, just three numbers, three passcode, right? Three, four, five, whatever. You can pick any numbers. If I choose a three, does it affect what I'm going to do for my second choice? No. Does it check? Can, can I do three, 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 three? Can I do three, three, three? Yeah. Just because I choose a three doesn't mean I can't do it again. So this is independent, obviously. It's independent of, so uh, all three numbers, you can choose them. They're independent of each other. All right, number two on the notes. Number two on the notes. Neil goes to the pet shop and he selects his he selects a treat for his dog. He chooses one and then he chooses another. What is the probability that Neil selects a bone and a ball? All right. Well, how many bones are there? Right? There's one, two, three. How many balls are there? I'll go red here. There are two tennis balls. Two tennis balls. All right, and then you got like two uh, uh, collars, but it doesn't say anything about the collars. However, we do need to count everything. So we got one, two, check them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven things, okay? So how many uh, how many bones are there? There's three, okay? So there we go. Should be three out of seven. And how, but if she, if he chooses a bone first, right? So now there's one less bone, right? If I take this out, let's say he gets the bone right there. One less bone. So this is gone. This this thing is, is no longer there. Well, how many things are still left, right? We're, we're looking for two tennis balls, but how many things are actually left? Six. So it's not going to be two out of six. I mean, it's not going to be two out of seven. It's going to be two out of six because there's one less thing. So you went from seven things right here, seven things, to six things. Does that make sense? So because the first thing affects the second thing. So now you multiply those together. Um, by the way, I would just uh, I would reduce the two six now, make it one third, divide by two and divide by two. That's gonna multiply to three twenty first. Oh wait, hold on. Well yeah, it doesn't matter. You can do you can reduce it later. Um, this go back. This should comes out to three over twenty one. That also reduces, and that reduces to one seventh. Divide by three and divide by three. All right. Let's go to number three on the notes right here. Mackenzie chooses one candle and then chooses another candle. What is the probability Mackenzie selects a polka dot candle at both times? All right, well, how many candles do you have? One, two, three, four, five. There's five candles total, okay? Now, how many polka dots are there? There are one, two polka dots out of five, right? So my probability should be two out of five. But then let's say she gets the she gets the first one. She gets this polka dot candle. It's no longer there, right? How many candles are left? How many candles are remaining? Uh, four now. There are four candles remaining, right? And how many are polka dot? One. So it should be one out of four, which it is. And now you multiply them together. Uh, two and four. It's going to be two times one is two. And four times five is 20. That's going to reduce divide by two, divide by two, and you get one tenth. All right, that's the first page of the notes for dependent probability. Let's go to the second page, and we'll see how far we get. We're probably going to get through number four and probably stop there, but we'll see. All right, we're going to read each, each problem. Here we go. Mrs. Moore is doing laundry. Sorry. Mrs. Moore is doing laundry and has various pieces of clothing in her laundry basket. All right. She got a bunch of different clothes in the laundry basket. By the way, this is a, uh, this is like a towel right here. That's a towel. Okay. So you do have to wash towels guys, right? Not just clothes. All right. We got to figure out what do we got? What do we got? What is the probability of selecting a top and selecting a bottom? Well, first things first, we got to count all the things. So we got one, two, three, four, everything counts and you've got to count each sock individually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen items. All right. Now, let's write that off to the side. Sixteen items. Okay. Um, all right. What's the probability of selecting the top and then selecting the bottom? Well, how many tops do we have? Let's see the tops. I have a top right here, and that's it. Okay. So that's going to be... Uh, one out of 16, right there. One out of 16, okay? Um, now, uh, how many bottoms are there? So let's go look at the bottoms, okay? 
Uh, bottom is a skirt, a pants, pants, skirt, pants. Okay, so I got five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Now, if she selects the um, the shirt first, right? She selects the, the shirt. It's gone, right? It's no longer there. So how many things are left now? We have 15 things left. Now, how many are bottoms? One, two, three, four, five. But it's five out of what? It's not 16 anymore. It's actually out of 15 now. Now, we multiply that out. Okay, I'm going to move this over. Um, well, I can't move it over yet, but let me let me go over on this side. 1 over 16 times 5 over 15, and I'll get rid of this. Okay, um, right there. All right, right there. Okay, don't want to give the answer away yet. All right, uh, 5 and 15, cross, uh, they reduce. 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 15 three times. Multiply it out, you get 1 over 48. Let's see if I actually did it right, which I know I did, but hey, whatever. Oh, I forgot. Well, anyway. All right, yes. Did I get 1 over 48? Yes, I did. Now, I forgot. It's supposed to, you're supposed to tell me, is it independent or dependent? It's obviously dependent because the first thing affected the second thing, so it is dependent. So you, you want to write dependent and 1 out of 48. Are you with me? All right. Let's go back to the top. Let's start all over. We know we're going to go back to 16, 16 things. Let's start all over again. Okay? All right. 16th items. We have our answer right there. B, we got to remember that in B, we need to tell if it's independent or dependent. Okay. What is the probability of selecting a striped sock, replacing it, and then selecting another sock? That's the big deal right there. Replacing it. If you replace it and put it back, you pulled out one thing, put it back, that means now it doesn't depend, the second thing doesn't depend on the first, so this is, should be independent. Yes, it is. All right. So that's independent. Write that down. What is the probability of, pull, of pulling a striped sock? So let's go look at all these things here. How many striped socks do I have? Let's circle them. I have a striped sock here, right here, right here, right here and right here. All right, how many is that? That is five, okay, out of 16, all right? And then replacing it and then getting another striped sock. Well, here's the deal. If I pull out a striped sock, the, the probability is five out of 16, but then I put it back. So, and then I reach in and grab another one and hopefully get a striped sock. So the probability again is the same because it's independent. It's gonna be five times 16 and five times 16, all right? I'm going to help you out here. 16 times 16 is 256, and 5 times 5 is 25. So that is your answer. That does not reduce. That does not reduce, so that is your answer for Part B. All right, what is the probability of selecting a towel, selecting the towel, replacing it? Ah, there it is again, replacing it. Okay, so that's going to be obviously independent. Okay, when you replace something, it becomes independent. And then selecting the towel again. All right, how many towels are there? Let's go back here. Let's see how many towels we have. We know there's 16 items. How many towels? Just one. Just this big, fat beach towel. All right, so what's the probability of getting a beach towel the first time? That's one out of 16. What's the probability? If you put it back, what's the probability of getting another beach towel? It's still one out of 16. All right, so you're going to get the probability total is 1 times 1 is 1. 16 times 16 is 256. So that is your answer right there. Oh, by the way, up here it was 25 over 256. I got it right. I just didn't show you. Okay. D, what's the probability of selecting a skirt and a top and one, uh, one, choice, one choice after another? Oh, so you select a skirt and don't replace it and then select a top, hopefully. Well, we've got to figure out the probability. All right. Let's go back up to the top. We're looking for a skirt and a top. All right. Skirt first. All right, how many skirts are there? <clears throat> we know there's 16 items right here, right? How many skirts? One and two. All right, we got two skirts. So the probability right here at the beginning is two out of 16, all right? And then we don't put it back. We pull out two skirts. How many things are left? If I pulled out a skirt, I'm sorry, I pulled out, let's say we pulled out this one. Let's say... Let's say we get this one right here. We pull it out. It's done. It's out. It's not going back. How many things are now left? Not 16, 15. So 
How many skirts are left? One, right? So when we go here, right, this is going to be how many skirts are left? One. How many items total are left? 15. You're going to multiply that together. It's going to be, uh, and I would reduce this now. Let's just do it now. 2 and 16 reduces. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 16 8 times. Just multiply it out. It's going to help you. 1 times 1 is 1. Now, 8 times 15 is uh, um, 120. So you get 1 over 120. And by the way, we said it was dependent, right? Dependent and 1 over 120. Man, I'm good. Amazing. All right, last one. What's the probability of selecting a matching pair of socks and one choice one choice after another. So you've got a matching pair of socks and then not put it back and then pull out. So you pull out a sock, not put it back, pull out another sock, the same kind of sock. Ooh, that's, that's tricky. How many matching pairs of socks are there? Let's go back to the beginning. Let's look right here. How many matching pairs of socks? We know there's 16 items. How many matching pairs of socks? All right. I have a matching pair of socks right here. I have a matching pair of socks right here, I have a matching pair of socks here, matching pair right right there, I have a matching pair of socks right here, but the, this one doesn't match, okay? So, um, pretty much you've got four, okay, you've got four striped socks and four um, uh, uh, blank white socks that match, okay? So, what's the probability You've got two pair of one and two pair of the other, so it should be four. I'm hoping I'm getting this right. We'll see if we get. Uh, we'll see if I get the right answer when we get there. So I'm guessing it's going to be there's two pair. So one mat. You pull it one match and uh, I'm going to say that this. I'm not thinking right now. <clears throat> Select a matching pair of socks. Solid. Oh, solid socks. Let's go back. Solid, not stripes. Oh, I didn't see that part. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so these are out. This is out. These are out. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're lacking, looking at, okay, there's four. I was. That's why I was confused. There's four m solid matching pairs of socks. So there's four. Four out of 16. You pull one out. Well, by the way, if you pull one out and don't replace it, is it independent or dependent? It's dependent, okay? And then um, if you pull one out, now there's three out of 15 because there's one less total and there's one less white sock. All right, four over 16 reduces. Four over 16 reduces to one fourth because you divide by four and divide by four. Three fifteenths reduces to one fifth. So that's gonna make it way easier to multiply. One over 20 is my answer. Let's see if I got it right. Yes, I got it right. All right. Um, I'm not going to do number five. We're going to stop right there. That's 18 minutes. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thanks for watching the notes video. Take care. God bless. All the best. Bye-bye.